a charged disk with an annulus. A thin disk with a circular hole at its center called an annulus has inner radius R1 and outer radius R2. This is the annulus, radius R1, outer radius R2. The disk has a uniform positive surface charge density, it's uniform, on its surface. Determine the total electric charge on the annulus, that's part A, and part B. The annulus lies in the YZ plane with its center at the origin. Yes, it is on the YZ plane. For an arbitrary point on the x-axis, the axis of the annulus, find the magnitude and direction of the electric field E. Consider points both above and below the annulus. So, on the points on the x-axis, what is the direction and magnitude of the electric field? That is the question. So, uh, this is what we will worry about for the moment. Uh, and then we will look at part C and part D. So, this has uniform positive charge. That means the charge density, sigma, is equal to the total charge, total charge, divided by the total area, because it's uniform. All right. A is area of the disk, uh, which is equal to... Uh, a is basically the area of the disk, uh, pi r2 square minus pi r1 square. So it's going to be the area uh, of the full disk subtracted from it, the area of the annulus. So we will have uh, the net area, total area here for this uh, situation, pi r2 square, which is the area of the full disk, minus pi r1 square, the area of the annulus. So the total area is pi r2 square minus r1 square. Then the charge, the total charge we have, Q, is going to be the surface charge density multiplied by the area. So we will see that the total charge is pi sigma r2 square minus r1 square. So part A of the question was determine the total electric charge on the annulus. The total electric charge is uh, basically pi sigma r2 square minus r1 square. Now we want to find the electric field uh, due to this uh, disk with annulus on it. Uh, so we can see that uh, if I pick any charge element here, it's going to create an electric field in this direction. And if I pick a symmetric charge element here, it will create an electric field in this direction. And due to symmetry, the components of the electric field on the YZ plane will cancel out. They will only add up on the x-axis. Now, uh, the area of this charge element will be dr times r d theta for an angular separation d theta here. Uh, the charge it contains is sigma times dA, which is sigma r dr d theta. So that will be the charge. And this is at a distance uh, square root of r square plus x square from this point. You can see that uh, I'm at a distance x on the x-axis and uh, I have um, are the distance from the center. So this is perpendicular because this is on the x-axis. The disk is on the yz plane. So we have square root of r square plus x square equals L, the distance between this uh, charge element and the point of interest where we want, we want to find the electric field. If I take the x component, then I have to multiply it with cosine phi, Cosine phi here is basically x divided by square root of r square plus x square. All right. So the charge element dq is equal to sigma dA, which is equal to sigma r dr d theta. The electric field due to this charge element dE is 
1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 dq divided by L square, the distance between the charge element and the point of interest, and that's equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. dq is sigma r dr d theta. Sigma r dr d theta. And the distance squared is r squared plus x squared. So because of this right triangle here, it's r squared plus x squared is equal to l squared. Okay, and due to symmetry, EY and EZ will cancel out to zero if you consider symmetric charge elements that will contribute to the total electric field here. The components on the YZ plane will cancel out. They will only add up on the x-axis. So we need to calculate the x component of the electric field, total electric field. This will be integrated over the area of the disk with the annulus. And we will consider the contribution from E charge element, DE cosine phi, which is the x component. So we have to integrate from 0 to 2 pi angle uh, phi between uh, angle theta between 0 to 2 pi and the radius from r1 to r2 uh, and we have dE which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, sigma r dr d theta sigma r dr d theta divided by r square plus x square then we have to multiply it with cosine phi what is cosine phi? It is x divided by square root of r square plus x square square root. All right. So we we see that the electric field is um, so from the theta integration. Theta inter theta is this angle here that we're varying between zero and two pi on the y z plane. Uh, we obtain two pi. 2 pi and we also have a sigma and x uh, that doesn't belong to the integral divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 and then we have the r integration from r1 to r2 uh, r dr r dr divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 over 2 and we let u square equals x square plus r square so that 2u du equals 2r dr x here is fixed so u du is going to replace r dr so the electric field is going to be uh, sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0 why because this 2 pi will make this 4 pi 2 and then I have the integral from the minimum value of u, which is uh, u1, let's call it, and maximum value of u, u2. R dr is u du, and this, and at the bottom I have u cube. So x squared plus r squared is u squared, so u squared to the power 3 over 2 is u cube. And this will get rid of this cube and make it a square. An integral of du over u square is going to give me sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 multiplied by minus 1 u to the power minus 1. 1 over minus 2 plus 1 u to minus 1. This will be evaluated between the lower limit of u and upper limit of u. Okay, and uh, because of the minus sign, uh, we can change the order. Uh, it's going to be evaluated from the upper limit to the lower limit. And this will give me, for the electric field, EX, sigma X divided by 2 epsilon 0. Then I have 1 over... Instead of u2, I have 1 over u1 minus 1 over 
u2 and this is sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 what was the lower limit of u1 at r equals r1 so this is 1 over square root x square plus r1 square minus 1 over x square plus r2 square square root all right but now we have to give two answers if this point is on the positive x-axis positive x direction here in the positive x-axis then uh, the answer will be on the positive x axis the electric field is sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0 1 over square root of x square plus r1 square minus 1 over square root of x square plus r2 square the direction of the electric field is in plus i hat direction however on the negative x axis on the minus x axis it will be in minus i hat direction so the electric field is sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0 1 over x square plus r1 square square root minus 1 over x square plus r2 square square root but in minus i hat direction so i have considered both cases above the origin and below the origin now you can see that r1 is less than r2 so this number is bigger so this is going to come out to be a positive uh, quantity okay so um, we've looked at the charge disk with an annulus we wanted to determine the total electric charge on the annulus the total electric charge we have on the annulus is uh, the charge density sigma multiplied by the area. The area is pi r2 square minus pi r1 square. So uh, that multiplied by sigma gives us the total charge. Now, what is the electric field due to this charge distribution? For positive x-axis, these are in plus i-hat direction. Negative x-axis, they are in minus i-hat direction. And we can determine by looking at a surface a charge element whose area is uh, r dr d theta uh, multiplied by sigma that gives us dq. And dq at a distance l from this point, where the point is a distance x from the center, is uh, going to create an electric field k dq over l squared uh, and we we have to integrate the x components of these uh, small electric fields because y and z components will cancel out considering the symmetry of the problem so the x component is de multiplied with cosine phi you see x axis is the vertical axis here so cosine phi is x this distance divided by l square root of r square plus x square so integral of theta between 0 and 2 pi we have to cover all such surface elements r has to vary between r1 and r2 uh, k uh, dq over l square r square plus x square multiplied by cosine phi x over square root of r square plus x square this gives us the integral of d theta gives us just a factor of 2 pi and then we are left with the integral r dr divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 halves which we solve by uh, doing the transformation x square plus r square is u square remembering that the variable here is r not x 
x is fixed. So uh, u du is r dr, and performing the integral, we find an answer, sigma x over 2 epsilon 0, 1 over square root x square plus r1 square, minus 1 over square root x square plus r2 square. Then we have to report on the positive x-axis, this is in plus i hat direction, on the negative x-axis, this is in minus i hat direction.